Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go, our scripture readings, Song of Songs 2, 8 through 14, and Luke 1, 39 through 47. This is the story of the visitation where Mary, the mother of God, who is pregnant with Jesus Christ our Lord, and uh, Elizabeth, her cousin, who is pregnant with John the Baptist, meet. Not only do the two mothers meet, but we see a wonderful encounter, really a supernatural encounter, but uh, of course it's natural as well, um, in the wombs where uh, John the Baptist greets Jesus, recognizes Jesus. Um, even when the two unborn children are still in the womb, they are kind of communicating with each other. Um, we hear in Scripture that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. This is important because the Holy Spirit is not a force or a power. We're not filled with a force or a power, and neither was Elizabeth. She was filled with a person. The Holy Spirit is a person, um, and in fact, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Blessed Trinity. So everything, and the Holy, of course, the Holy Spirit is God. And so in this story, everything that Elizabeth does and everything that Elizabeth says is inspired by God himself. Uh, the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Um, we see that Elizabeth says, Who am I that the mother of my Lord should visit me? And so here, again, inspired by the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth declares that Mary is not just um, a normal mother. She is not just the, the mother of a human person, but she is the mother of my Lord. And uh, my Lord, of course, is God. And, and so Mary is the mother of God, and we understand this um, definitely taught by the Holy Spirit through the words of Elizabeth. Um, we also hear Elizabeth saying that as soon as she heard the greeting of Mary, um, that the babe in her womb leapt. So we see here that an unborn child, John the Baptist, recognizes uh, the Savior and is one of the very few, one of the first actually to recognize the Savior. The importance of the person in the womb, the unborn person. John the Baptist is able to leap for joy. He is able to already begin his work even before he's born. So John the Baptist is a person. The unborn child is a person. And these two realities uh, for the Catholic are, are teachings, they're doctrines. Uh, we do believe that the unborn are people. Um, we see this in Scripture, especially with John the Baptist, um, as was one example here in this Scripture. And we also do believe that Mary is not just the mother of the human person, uh, Jesus Christ, but that Jesus Christ is both human and divine, and so she therefore is the mother of God. These truths we derive from Scripture. We see that the Holy Spirit is working through Elizabeth, um, speaking through her, of course, and, um, and inspiring her. And so we take these to be true. Um, it's so important, uh, divine revelation, that we gather our truths from reality itself, but also from divine re revelation. And if we don't do that, where else would we gain our truths from? Um, I think it's, it's important uh, right now what's going on in our culture is we have a Supreme Justice uh, stepping down. And his name is uh, Justice Anthony Kennedy. And he said something in 1992 uh, that is really shocking and, and actually disturbing about liberty, about our freedom. He says, at the heart of liberty, okay, and in America we take liberty, it's so, so important to us. He says, at the heart of liberty is the right to define one's own concept of existence, of meaning, of the universe, and of the mystery of human life. So again, I want to read that again. At the heart of liberty is the right to define one's own concept of existence, one's own meaning of the universe and of the mystery of human life. Without reality itself, uh, to, to observe reality and base uh, truth off of reality, and also especially divine revelation as we see in scripture. Um, the other side of it, that would be kind of a God-centered um, idea. A man-centered idea would be to um, do exactly what Justice Kennedy is saying, is to define our own. The, each individual person, autonomous person, um, defines their concept of existence. What do I decide existence is going to be? Um, what, is that, what is the meaning of that existence? What is the meaning of the universe? I define the universe, and I define the mystery of human life. And so this is where we have this uh, man-centered you know, man -centered idea and God-centered idea. Um, it's interesting that he said this in 1992, and the Catechism of the Catholic Church was also uh, written in that year and uh, translated into English in 94. 
And so here again, we see two um, opposite worldviews, really, a God-centered view, which is based on reality and revelation, and then a man-centered view, which is based on relativism. And, and uh, Pope Emeritus uh, Benedict XVI would say we are now in a dictatorship of relativism. Well, this dictatorship uh, definitely began before 1992, but uh, Justice Kennedy um, described it there in, in 1992. Um, we also see in this uh, in our scriptures today the Song of Songs, the flowers appear in our land, um, and and this is uh, you know the of course the excitement of uh, Jesus Christ coming, the anticipation of the Messiah, the Savior, and the flower. If we look into of course around us and we see flowers blooming on a tree or on a plant, uh, we first see the flower, and then what follows the flower? The fruit. The fruit always comes after the flower. So we see uh, Mary as the flower, and of, and of course we see Jesus as the fruit. Uh, Mary is the flower, Jesus is the fruit. Um, what happens to the flower, of course it blooms, it's beautiful, it's pretty, but then it has to fade away, it has to decrease um, so that the fruit can then appear. Um, we see this of Mary. She obviously takes a uh, is a preparing for Jesus, and she decreases. We also see this, of course, in the words of John the Baptist himself, who says, I must decrease so he may increase. So as the Christian, we see in this example of a flower bearing forth the fruit, we see an example of how we can live, that we should be the flower in our society, always remembering that we must decrease and we must fade away um, after blooming so that Jesus Christ can be made known. Um, and this is our, our role. So Mary, the flower, you could even say John the Baptist is a flower, and we as a Christian are a flower. Jesus Christ is the fruit. Uh, this fruit uh, may remind us of the garden in Genesis. Um, of course, in Genesis, it was, it was a forbidden fruit, but Jesus is not forbidden. Jesus is the fruit in which all of us must eat from. Um, this fruit, Jesus Christ, is the fruit of the womb, as we say in the Hail Mary, fruit of your womb, Jesus. This fruit also hangs on a very important tree, the tree that is in the center of the universe. That tree is the cross. Jesus Christ, the fruit of Mary's womb, will hang upon the tree, and we reach towards that tree every time we go to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Every time we partake in the Eucharist, we are eating from the fruit of Jesus Christ. Um, and that is, of course, um, the fruit that gives us life. I want to thank you so much for joining me for Lexio on the Go. Uh, please uh, check out some of our resources. We have link to liturgy.com, which is fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. We also have Beanwell Coffee, um, the Oratory Prayer Book, and the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. This is Remnant's version of the Chaplet. Have a great day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.